Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gudi. I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine and assisted conception at Fertility Plus and the Homerton Fertility Centre in London. So today we'll talk about ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome and seeing whether we can make its treatments safer. Now, across the world, we have slowly moved towards using the GNRH antagonist protocol as well as the GNRH agonist as a trigger to lower the risk of ovarian hyperstimulation. This has led to freezing of embryos and a much better success rate. Cabagolin has been used for a long time as a secondary agent to lower the risk of ovarian hyperstimulation. What we do know is that though the agonist trigger reduces the chances of ovarian hyperstimulation significantly, there are some women who will still head towards severe ovarian hyperstimulation, which could have a shorter duration, but those risks remain. Also, women go through a lot of discomfort, which could be the reason why we have to look at other factors that improve the chances of lowering symptoms as well as the other parameters towards ovarian hyperstimulation. So in this paper which was published, the question asked is, does the use of cabagolin and the GNH antagonist after oocyte retrieval prevent ovarian hyperstimulation or not? Ovarian hyperstimulation is an iatrogenic condition caused by the administration to a large extent of HCG. Its risk factors are PCOS, high ovarian reserve, high antral follicle count, low BMI, high estradiol numbers, increased numbers of oocytes, younger women, worsened in pregnancy, and the use of HCG as a trigger. Prevention of ovarian hyperstimulation is the gold standard and should be practiced. The most efficient way of final oocyte maturation is GNRH agonist, which induces FSH and LH rise from the pituitary. It reduces the risk of ovarian hyperstimulation significantly. Cabagolin is a dopamine agonist. It has been used for secondary prevention of ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, and in short, it reduces vascular permeability and it may ha have play a huge role in preventing moderate and severe ovarian hyperstimulation without impacting on live birth rate or miscarriage. So the aim of the study was to see whether adding a GRH antagonist to cabagolin in the, in the luteal phase after having given an agonist trigger reduced the rate of mild or moderate ovarian hyperstimulation. Does it help recovery? So PCOS women, 480 agonist trigger in an antagonist treatment cycle. Group one was the GNRH agonist trigger on its own. Group two was GNRH agonist trigger plus cabergoline 0.5 milligram from a day of trigger for seven days. And group three, was the agonist trigger with 0.5 milligram of cabogolin orally for seven days from the day of trigger and the addition of an antagonist Ganadalex 0.25 for five days after the oocyte retrieval. Let's have a look at the results. Look at the initiation of menses when period started after egg collection within four to five days and 43% when you combined both cabogolin and the antagonist. Realized oocyte diameter, sorry, ovarian diameter, discomfort, bloating, severe ovarian hyperstimulation, presence of free fluid, mild or moderate ovarian hyperstimulation, and that's key, and that was only in 18% of cases. So if you, if you have a look at that, if you combine Cabergoline and the antagonist, you're more likely to see a faster resumption to normal 
less discomfort, the ovaries become much smaller and the risk of having even a moderate to mild of happy stimulation is significantly decreased. The addition of carbagolin to some extent improves electrolyte concentration. It decreases mild and moderate of happy stimulation, reduces patient discomfort and the addition of the antagonist prevents further ovary enlargement, it prevents the accumulation of pelvic collection, reduces bloating and hemoconcentration also tends to get reduced. Why is the resumption of a menses important? Because menses usually occurs because of ovarian suppression. It also occurs when hormonal production reaches the, the early follicular concentration and at that time they are the lowest in the cycle. The antagonist also leads to more rapid luteolysis, breakdown of the corpus luteum to a large extent and shrinking of the ovaries and thus aids early menses. So what do you know? First and foremost, prevent ovarian hyperstimulation. Move to an antagonist protocol and give an agonist trigger. But remember, patients will still be in discomfort and a small portion will still head towards ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. But if you, are, if you add carbogolin on the day of trigger, and if you add the antagonist after a collection, you're going to reduce the patient's risk and discomfort. And likely you're going to see patients happier earlier. So this was a retrospective study, but it seemed to be a large study, and one of the first studies looking at the three arms. So again, my conclusion and the learning point from this is that you will face ovarian hyperstimulation in especially in polycystic ovaries with a large AMH, large antral follicle count, and those with a large volume. Those who are metabolic, those who have had irregular periods, they may run the higher risk of getting mild to moderate ovarian hyperstimulation, even with ag agonist trigger. So in these cases, I think it is reasonable to give the cabogolin as well as antagonist for between four and seven days and that will lead to a much faster recovery. Thank you very much. If you have liked the page, please like it and share it and let us spread the small uh, you know, evidences and papers across to a large part of the world where people may not have access to it. Thank you very much.